Mr Paisley, the UK and Israel have only recently signed a strategic plan entirely devoid of human rights demands on Israel. A real concern is that this free trade deal will become similar. The UK government will, call, will open uh, a call for input on an enhanced bilateral free trade agreement with Israel this year, and the Scottish government will provide a submission. However, Chair, there is no substitution for ongoing, meaningful engagement with Scottish Government officials on FTA negotiation matters, something which was not previously there with talks between New Zealand and Australia. Mr Paisley, we in the SNP are, are neither anti-trade nor anti-free trade, and we recognise that there are many areas where there are avenues for more trade cooperation, such as the spaces of digital, data, science and technology. In relation to Israel, once we gain our independence, we in the SNP seek for Scotland to rejoin the EU, and in doing so, it would rejoin the, the deal the EU has with Israel. This deal, of course, makes it categorically clear that trade with the occupied Palestinian territories should not be treated as if it was trade with Israel. Until Scotland gains her independence chair, we in the SNP are urging the UK government in the strongest possible terms to use every opportunity and indeed this rare opportunity of trade negotiations to end the persecution of the Palestinian people. As with any negotiation, there are trade-offs. However, turning a blind eye to persecution should not be one of them. It must be the case that it remains a priority for the UK government and this matter remains a red line throughout every single stage of the negotiations. If human rights demands are not met, a free trade deal must come off the table. A, free, a life free from persecution. To quote Human Rights Watch, apartheid conditions and a decent standard of living that we all deserve as human beings is worth much more than a few tariff reductions between two already incredibly rich countries. Chair. There is no doubt that trade relationships can lead to wider relationships and can often be used as a way of influencing, for good, sometimes for ill, the actions of other countries and governments. In this instance, we believe that making the safety and freedom for an illegal, from an illegal occupation of the Palestinian people should be a condition for any UK-Israeli free trade deal. Human rights concerns must be consistently raised throughout every stage, including at the inaugural UK-Israel Joint Committee to be held in the UK this year, and also at the Joint UK-Israel Innovation Summit in March. If previous free trade deals are anything to go by, then it is simply no surprise, Chair, that the Department for International Trade has not yet published its objectives and scoping assessments for this set of negotiations, and I'd appreciate clarification from the Minister when this will be available. Mr Paisley, Israel accounts for much less than 1% of UK exports. Anything uh, it does will not fix the huge absence of trade it caused by Brexit, which I remind the House Scotland did not vote for. Another key point to note, Chair, is that the UK's total bilateral trade relationships with Israel stands at £5 billion in 2020. In comparison, UK exports to the EU were £251 billion pounds, representing 42% of all UK exports. And we could increase exports to Israel by a factor of 10, and it would still only be a relatively minor, minor trading partner compared to the EU and others. And this deal will not compensate for what we have lost because of Brexit. In 2019, Scottish exports were growing consistently in all directions to the rest of the UK, the EU, in the rest of the world. We now have clear evidence that this is no longer the case as Scottish goods exports fell by 25% in the latest year to June 2021, compared to the equivalent period in 2019. And an industry uh, chair that has a significant number of farmers in my constituency of Adrian Schott's contribute to is the food and drinks industry. House of Commons research found that Brexit is costing the food and drinks industry £62 million a week. 
That £62 million a week that farmers and producers cannot afford to lose, and I don't remember seeing that at the side of a bus. We seek assurances that nothing will be done to land a deal with Israel that will make it easier for goods that have been produced in the illegally occupied territories to be marked, sold and exported as produce of Israel. These goods should be regarded as the proceeds of crime. We know that a free trade deal benefiting solely Israeli products and not products that have been produced in the illegally occupied territories will reduce the competitiveness of Palestinian produce, put Palestinian producers at a disadvantage and make comparative prices of similar goods from both sides of the wire fence potentially distorted for UK consumers. And in relation to this, I would appreciate clarification from the Minister on two points. Firstly, so that customers across the four nations can decide for themselves where to buy from, we seek assurances that the Department of International Trade will follow a policy of non-divergence from our European partners when it comes to labelling. The possible free trade deal must include clauses that mandate accurate labelling of Israeli goods and settlement goods so as not to mislead the consumer. Secondly, we also urge the Department to engage in every effort to improve the competitiveness of Palestinian products and improve trade links between the UK and occupied territories. This should include redoubling diplomatic efforts to see the blockade of the Gaza Strip end, an embargo that covers trade. This should also include looking at the merits of advising UK businesses against trading with illegal settlements as a disincentive to Israeli settlement building in the occupied Palestinian territories. It must also be remembered, Chair, that aid cuts from the Conservative government have hit the occupied territories hard, have badly impacted livelihoods and it is hampered, hampering trade growth. Improving trade with Palestine is also a way out of poverty. And a final point I wish to make on, Chair, is, in, is on UK arms trade with Israel. Over the last three years, £76 million worth of arms sales have been exported to Israel. The Minister must categorically state today that offensive arms and small weapons those most commonly used against civilians will be outside the free trade agreement negotiations. Ultimately, Chair, what cannot happen is for these trade negotiations to, to couple Israel's behaviour in the occupied territories, behaviour that is categorically illegal under international law.